Healthy Living Live, we are coming to you from the Norton Brownsboro Hospital, and I love this hospital because there are so many windows, lots of sunshine. It's actually a beautiful day and lots of good information today, Jackie. Absolutely. We're talking about all kinds of neurologic issues today, and with us next is a neuropsychologist, Dr. Brad Foley, and I've interviewed him before about Alzheimer's issues, and that's been one of the biggest hits on our website. Um, but a lot of times, movement disorders in particular have a cognition component, meaning that there's something going on with their brain as well. When we talk about cognition, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the way people process information and the way they think. So what we know is that every little spot in the brain, every part of the brain does something. And in Parkinson's disease, we consider that to be uh, relevant to movement disorders. But what we also know is that's relevant to how we think. Um, and so cognition refers to things like memory, language, attention, um, paying attention and switching our focus of attention. And all, those th all of those things are related to cognition, how we think and process information. My dear father-in-law had Parkinson's disease and I didn't at that time know that cognition or a dementia like state was part of the disease but as he got older as the disease progressed he would lose the ability to tune the television to a certain st station because those factors or functions were no longer available. Right and dementia is something that's progressive mm -hmm. so what we know is that take for instance Parkinson's disease specifically uh, there was a study done in 2005 we usually think of Parkinson's disease as a movement disorder but that study showed it's, it studied 115 individuals who were newly diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. At that point of their diagnosis, almost 90% of patients had impairments in cognition in an area called we call attention and executive function. They were not able to shift set, pay attention to different things at the same time, do things that we consider to be very human mm -hmm. as the highlight of human cognition. They were impaired at that. And as time goes on, up to 40% of people with Parkinson's disease will develop a dementia, meaning their cognition will get worse and worse and worse over time. The rest of people with Parkinson's disease have stable cognitive dysfunction, um, but in a certain percentage, it can get worse over time, and so we want to make sure we diagnose that properly so we can get those patients treated. Do, do all movement disorders have cognition issues as well? If you have a movement disorder, do they go hand in hand? They can. It depends on what the movement disorder is. Um, so things like Huntington's disease uh, is a good example of a uh, movement disorder that also has neuropsychiatric complications to it. Typically, a lot of these uh, movement disorders like Huntington's and Parkinson's disease uh, have a uh, start off with depression as being a very strong problem and then it moves to things that we associate with what I called executive function before difficulty laying down new memories retrieving memories um, shifting your focus of attention coming up with new concepts learning from feedback all of those things can be disturbed in those kinds of problem movement disorders talk about treatment options I mean again you can't cure many of the these diseases but you can work on the symptoms that's right so treatment options include things from medication and oftentimes we can give things that uh, medications that are prescribed for things like Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. um, a few of these are also uh, FDA approved for things like Parkinson's disease and other kinds of cognitive problems. We can also use early on in the stages of these diseases things we call compensatory strategies. So we can refer these patients to people like speech and language therapists, occupational therapists, who can teach them how to use the strengths that they have to overcome some of the weaknesses that they have. And that's a very important uh, uh, thing to, to to remember so that if you bring a loved one in or if you yourself have an issue like this there are places we can send you where they can help you use the strengths you have uh, to compensate for some of the weaknesses that you have. Jackie can you address this on a personal mm -hmm. level and you doctor on a medical level with your father did you notice that if you helped him with uh, maybe memory games mm -hmm. etc did it improve his condition and doctor are those things really do they have value as far as uh, getting them to read crossword puzzles etc does it does it help Jackie did well, this, you find that help? Well this was my father-in-law and we did find oh. that Okay. He liked to talk about things in the past right. more than things that were uh, more present. Right. So that was kind of hard. But again, we just loved him. And but it's hard sometimes to see what can we do for these patients. But there are the therapy programs. Yeah. And what's interesting is, like you said, there are some patients who lose their ability to remember things on short term, meaning mm -hmm. what we did yesterday, what we did a couple of days ago, what we had for breakfast this morning. But they can remember things from a long time ago, right. what they did 20 years ago, or they can remember their own intentions. So what we do is we use those strategies, have them use their long-term memory and their prospective memory, remembering your own intentions, to compensate for their short-term episodic memory problems. And so 
you can use different memories uh, that are retained in an individual to help them compensate for things that aren't going so well. And that's usually done by speech and language and occupational therapists who've been trained in cognitive rehabilitation. I know there is so much going on with, with gene therapy uh, to treat Parkinson's and some of these other diseases. Give us a little bit of hope for the future about what's coming down the road. Well, uh, gene therapy is, is part of what we call personalized medicine, mm -hmm. where we understand somebody's uh, genetic makeup to the point where we can prescribe medications for them uh, that are very unique, very unique uh, to their to their makeup, and we can also understand that on a cognitive level. So once we know how much dopamine someone has, or all these different chemicals in the brain, we can prescribe kind of uh, cognitive rehabilitation therapies that will be directed towards the specific problems they have and the problems that we hope that they are going to be able to compensate for. Um, but that's certainly something in the future. In Parkinson's disease, for example, um, they've used stem cell therapy um, in addition to, to those kinds of things to help kind of regenerate those cells. But those are at the infancy um, of the of the uh, treatment programs. But at least it's on the horizon. Sure. Absolutely on the horizon. Sure. Dr. Brad Foley, thank you for being with us. Thank Great information. Very, thanks for having me. All right.